Dead on, sir. You're right. We can turn it around. All the actuaries, all the numbers show it. But it's got to happen in the next few years or we're done. Right. And right. there are globalists that want to have a world government, a system run by select crony capitalists using socialism at the grassroots to make people dependent. And I've talked to not just high-level folks that have been in government that are on your team, but separately high-level people in government currently that say there's an internal war going on and that you're a manifestation of that. I don't want to get anything inside baseball with you, but I already know yeah. the inside baseball. I know now from top people that you actually are for real and you understand you're in danger and you understand what you're doing is epic. It's George Washington level and you understand that office. So I want to tell you right now, can you speak about the war for the soul of this country that's happening right now and really tell people what's happening and commit to people that you won't Ross Perot under death threats and step down when you're in the lead uh, two months from the election? Okay, so let me just tell you, Alex, as you know, I'm leading in every poll nationally in every poll state. I'm leading in Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, the SEC, Texas. I'm leading in Texas, which I love. I love Texas. You know, we were there. Mark Cuban called up. He said, do you want to use the arena? I used it. We filled it up in three or four days, 20,000 people. In Mobile, Alabama, we had 35,000 people. We had 20,000 in Oklahoma. I'm so into this. And I'm not into, you know, I could do other things that I would enjoy doing, to be honest with you. No, it's you're doing not, a dangerous mission. We understand that. It's not an easy thing. But the key is make America great again. We can make America great again. But if you have to suffer through four more or eight more years of what's gone on in the past and, and you know, what's going, it's just, we're being eaten away. It's just, eat. it's eating away at our country. And we can make, in my opinion, we can make America greater than ever before. But we have to get going. It has to happen. We have to get going. And, you know, when you look at the vision, I said, Iraq, you agreed with me on Iraq. I said, hit the oil. I said a lot of things that turned out to be true, 100 percent true. And I'm giving credit. I'm giving credit by some people. Some people refuse to acknowledge it. You know, they refuse to say. No, that. you've been you've been you've been absolutely on target. So what I'm asking I mean, is, though, right. can That's you speak right. to the crossroads we're at right now, though? Because you've talked about it. Are we at a crossroads to decide whether this country's done or whether we go to the next level? Well, I think this, I think that, sadly, I think that if we don't get it right this time, I think this is going to be the most important election our country's ever had. I mean, you'd have to say George Washington was, was right there. You know, the couple of pretty important elections, right? But this is certainly in the last, in the modern era, this is the most important election, election our country's ever had. If we don't get it right, if we put another one of these people in, like Hillary, I mean, she, she's so corrupt. She is so corrupt, and she shouldn't even be allowed to run and frankly, her greatest legacy, she was a horrible secretary of state. If she's if she runs, I think her greatest legacy will be that she got out of the email scandal. That's what I think. It'll be one of the greatest jobs I've ever seen of getting out of a scandal because General Petraeus and many others, I mean, their lives have been destroyed for doing 5% of what she did. That's right. So she shouldn't be allowed to run. But, you know, the recent Fox poll that just came down two days ago has me beating her head to head, which is very interesting and very good and beating her soundly head to head. But we have to get it right. Our country can be absolutely, we can turn it around. But I would agree with you, if we don't get it right this time, I'm not sure if you go another four or eight years with the insanity and the stupidity of these leaders, I'm not sure you're going to be able to turn it around anymore. I think it could be no, over. Donald Trump, the man in the arena, his new book, uh, we're going to talk about in a moment, is exposing the fact that this country is being sabotaged by design. Specifically, I don't want to bring up detractors. And it's a question I had early on, but then I did more research. And I understand that you really do want to save this country where your children and grandchildren live. But let's expand on this. There are certain pundits out there saying you played golf with Bill Clinton. And so, you you know, you've, you've you had to do business in New York. So you said nice things about Hillary. I get keeping your enemies closer when you're not, you know, in politics. I get it. I understand. I think that's what you did. But but tell us specifically and I, and I don't think this now. I've seen it. I know you're for real. You wouldn't be saying the things you're doing. They're scared of you. The whole system's coming on against you. But, but promise us that you're not going to dr drop out at the key moment, keeping all the other Republicans out of view, and then Hillary races to the head or, or Jeb Bush does. Because as you know, folks are claiming you're a Clinton operative. You know, I've never heard that. I've, I've, I heard it actually a few months ago, but I've hit her harder than anybody times 10 if you look at this, you have, you have. Just here, I was a businessman, yet I've only been a politician for five months. I hate to use the term because, you know, it's all. You're a statesman. No, 
decisions. But I've just been doing this for a very short period of time. I was establishment. You know, I was like a guy like you would say Trump is total establishment. And I was a big donor to a lot of different Republicans. But over the years, I've given to Democrats. I've given to Republicans. I've given to everybody because I had an obligation. I was a businessman. One of the magazines recently called me a world class businessman. The truth is I did. I built an unbelievable company, a tremendous assets, tremendous, not only that, iconic assets, very little debt, tremendous cash flow. It's a great company. And by the way, people now see how good when I did the filing. Everyone said, oh, he'll never file, he'll never file. It's almost 100 pages long, and it's an unbelievable company. So I built, which by the way, the reason I say that, that's the kind of thinking our country needs. But I got along great with Clinton. I got along great with Harry Reid. I got along great with everybody. Because when I needed them, I didn't want to have argument i didn't want to have somebody say well clinton doesn't want it to happen sure, you're so not a loser you don't get in mindless fights you move forward with your agenda well, but now you see america in trouble and you're hey yeah. that's all sideline now donald trump's not working for donald trump he wants to work for america yeah as a businessman you couldn't have even functioned if you don't get along no, with i know people. yeah for example in new york city it's 95 percent democrat i mean if, if i didn't get along with the democrats i wouldn't have one well, i'll tell I'm you i mean you did want the vice president you know, a position that's come out decades ago behind the scenes. I, I mean, I know you're a Republican. What about libertarianism? What's your view of libertarianism? And then I want to ask you, who's your favorite president? And who do you think your running mate might be? Folks think it's Ted Cruz. Well, I think that libertarianism is sort of interesting. There are certain things that I really like about it. But, you know, uh, keeping government out as much as possible. We need government for protection. We have to protect. When you look at these maniacs in the Middle East that want to destroy us. And, you know, the problem we have today, Alex, is the weaponry. If this were 100 years ago, I'd say forget about them. Let them keep fighting. They've been fighting all their lives. Let them keep fighting each other. Who cares? But the weaponry is so powerful, and they hate us so much that we have to now protect. So that's a big part of government. So there's a certain common sense to certain elements. And I do very well with the libertarians, frankly, you know, because they sort of get it and they, they get me. But we need bigger strength than I think the libertarians really want. And we need it. And we have to have it. We have to have it. If we don't have it, we're not going to have a country. If we don't have borders, we're not going to have a country. As far as running mates, it's too soon to say. I, I actually respect a couple of people that are on the stage. Some of them I have absolutely no respect for. They're, I mean, I think they're not very good at all at what they do. You look at what's going on. But uh, I have respect for a number of people that are on the stage with me. I have respect for a lot of people that are throughout this country, you know, political people. I'll pick somebody I think that can really be a great vice president, ultimately has to be a great president because that's, you know, 90% of that function is, you know, if something bad happens, they got to be a good president. You have to view it from that standpoint. And my favorite president in the more or less modern era would be Ronald Reagan. I've always liked him. I helped him. And by the way, he was a Democrat. A lot of people don't know. He was. Some of a liberal Democrat, Alex, as you know. And he became a somewhat conservative, I wouldn't say the most conservative, but a somewhat conservative Republican. But he wanted to make America great. And he really did. He wanted to make, he had actually, let's make America great. That was his, and mine is make America great again. So there's a little bit of a difference. But my son, uh, my son, you know, finally sold me on being a bigger supporter of yours. I mean, I liked you, love Americana, you're pure Americana, but I'm still, you know, it was research, but, but my 13 year old son's really smart, does a lot of research. He, he watches all the debates and he just really loves you. He is on cloud nine that you're here, Rex Jones. And it was his question, uh, you know, uh, which president was your favorite? Uh, but, but all time, all time, who's your favorite? Well, all time, I'd say Ronald Reagan, uh, shorter term, I would say. Well, you, you know, you look at Lincoln, you look at Washington, you have to go with, they were, they're the classics, right, Alex? You know, you, you think in terms of the great classics, you have to go with the Lincolns and the Washingtons. I agree, Once as a man's started, man, George Washington was a badass. Yeah, that's what they say. I mean, that's what they say. He said, they say he never told a lie. Let's hope that's true, okay? But George Washington was pretty good. But we had some, look, we had some great presidents. And we had some good presidents on the other side, too, in all fairness. But uh, we will hopefully be right at the top of that list. We're going to make the country so strong, and we're going to make it financially secure. We can't owe $21 trillion, because it's going to be that well, That's my very final question. What type of an elite wants a Cloward and Piven bankrupt the country so socialists can run it, and we all get handouts? What type of an elite is that? I mean, you've been around these people. Are they mentally ill, Donald Trump? Well, we have to make our country rich again. You know, the other day I said to a woman, to a, a, she came up to Mr. Trump at, at a big rally where we had 14,000 people. And at the end, she just sees me and I'm, I'm you know, signing autographs and stuff. And she said, Mr. Trump, I'm voting for you 100 percent. 
But are you, this whole concept of making it rich, it sounds so crass. I said, you know what, it might sound crass, but if we don't make our nation rich again, if we don't take back our jobs from all these other countries that are ripping us, and if we don't take back our money, and if we don't, you know, balance up our budget, at least get it damn close and soon, we're not going to have a nation anymore. We're a third world country, Donald Trump. You know, I know you've got to go. 60 second break. I want to come back for just three minutes. Talk about your book and your big rally in Virginia tonight. We'll be back in 70 seconds. Donald Trump, powerful interview. You got to want to be on the top. You got to want to be free or you're going to be slaves. Donald Trump's agreed to stay a few more minutes with us. Uh, and he brought up. You know, somebody that he wanted to thank on air that I want to thank on air. He came in here a month ago. He's been on all these big shows. Just an incredible guy. I was aware of who he was, a patriot fighting communism all over the world. Tell us, Mr. Trump, about Mr. Stone, who helped get this interview uh, set up. Well, Roger's a good guy, and he, he is a patriot and believes strongly in a strong nation. A lot of the things that uh, that I believe in. And, he, you know, I see him all over television. Uh, people like Roger. He's a tough cookie, I will tell you that. But people like him. But he's been so loyal and so wonderful. And he is the one. He really wanted me to do this interview, and I'm doing it. And uh, so uh, we appreciate it, Roger. Well, I knew who he was, but then I did more research on him. This guy literally fought communists all over the world, ran big elections against the Soviet Union uh, in, in Latin America and Africa and Asia. I mean, it, uh, and I know he's been friends with you for a long time and advising you. So, again, my respect level went up even more knowing that you're talking to real political operatives, not, not fake pundits that are on TV. And that brings me to mainstream media. I love the fact, when I first saw it a few days ago, they misrepresented it. They said Trump wants $5 million. Then I read deeper. You said give $5 million to wounded warriors before yeah, I go make CNN $50 million. That's what you make these shows. Isn't but that terrible? You know, they took that statement. I said give $5 million. I'm going to want $5 million that we're going to give to the wounded warriors or the vets, right? Which is the same thing as far as I'm concerned. We split it up. Because they're making a fortune on these debates, which never had anybody. You know, Fox had 24 million people. They used to get like a million. And uh, CNN had the biggest ratings in the history of CNN. And I won't take full credit, but I'll take 99.9% .9 credit. So I said, give me $5 million. I want to give it to the wounded warriors. I, I want to give it to the vets. And But a lot of people said Trump wants $5 million. And I said it right in the same sentence, Alex. I didn't say it like That's how know, they deceive. I said, I want $5 million that will go to the wounded warriors. And they would play it. They even took the tape. You know, the tape is worse than the pen. They can cut it. So they say, give me $5 million, and then they cut it. Nobody knows, what am I doing? I'm asking for money to be on a debate. It's ridiculous. No, I wanted $5 million to go to the wounded wars in particular. And uh, let's see what happens. I don't know. You know, the one problem, Alex, if I didn't go to the debate, then you know what would happen. They'd say he's chicken. I mean, I think I won every debate. Every but it's true. I mean, I saw one channel made like $40 million off you being on there. Yeah. They should give all of it to the vets. Well, they should give a lot more than five, I'll tell you right now. But, you know, the problem is if I say I won't do it, then uh, the people that I'm debating who, frankly, have been very easy, if you want to know the truth. You can just correct them once you're on stage. Well, the people I'm debating, they'll say, oh, he's chicken, he's chicken, he's chicken. You know, that's that's the problem with that. But it's hard when you're leading all the polls and then you don't show up to a debate and then they'll be uh, doing numbers on you. But I, I would love to see money go to the wounded warriors. I think it's it would be. I so agree. Funny. What about you know, crippled it's America? Thing. It's a number yeah. one. you got a big rally tonight. Everywhere you go, your crowds just get bigger. I mean, obviously, you're probably going to get the Republican nomination now. Wow. And you're ready for the dirty tricks. It, uh, one minute left, Donald Trump. What do you have to say about your book and what's coming up? Well, first of all, before the book, because you mentioned one thing, I had never heard that, but I am in this to win it. I am not in this to say, oh, gee, I've done a really good job. A reporter called up, a very powerful reporter said, how does it feel? How does it feel? I said, it only feels because they said what we've done has never been done before politically. And you know, I've been in the poll for five months since it came out. I'm number one. I said, it's only good if we win. If I if I don't win, I've wasted a lot of time. That's the way I view it. He said, no, no, you haven't. You haven't. I said, believe me, if I don't win. Because we can't do anything to make our country great if I don't win. I'll be watching television someplace. It'll be forget it. So I wrote a book called Crippled America. It's doing a fantastic business. I don't know if you can see that thing right up we there. We can. But it's doing great business. I hope your audience goes out and buys it as Christmas gifts and everything else. And I just want to finish by saying your reputation's amazing. I will not let you down. You will be very, very uh, impressed, I hope. And I think we'll be speaking a lot, but you'll be... Uh, 
you'll be looking at me in a year and a year or two years. Let's give me a little bit of a time to, to run things. But uh, a year into office, you'll be saying, wow, I remember that interview. He said he was going to do it, and he did a great job. You'll be very proud of our country. Well, I'm impressed. I mean, you're saying you're fully committed. You know, there's no future if we don't take this country back. Donald Trump. I really? hope you can help uncripple America. Thank you so much, sir. That You will be attacked for coming on, and we know you know that. Thank you. Thank you very much.